Hey gang, got a special one for you today. This is the Benchmade Crooked River. Now how good have Benchmade been in the last couple of years? I remember like 2015, everyone was just well over Benchmade. But then they came out with this, was really their first surprise kind of different design. And then they've fired off a whole bunch of pretty decent hits since then. This is like a larger hunting knife. It's from the Hunt series. Uh, that doesn't mean it's only for hunting, but that's definitely what it's marketed towards. You know what this reminds me of? This is like someone has gone and grabbed a Buck 110 from the 60s, which has remained essentially unchanged since then, apart from a couple of sprint runs and whatnot, and added all the modern features to it, but sort of still kept it for the same people that would have appreciated the Buck 110. Like a larger, multi-purpose, you know, reliable knife. Your grandpa would love this. Uh, let's go some size comparisons. We'll start off next to the Bic Lighter, which uh, most people know the size of, and some ants too. There you go. Uh, this is an Open L number 8, another familiar, nice traditional knife. Let's sit next to the very swanky uh, Spydeco Slish Abui, and next to the American Lawman, a bit more of a, I don't know, high utility knife perhaps. Uh, let's sit next to a Spydeco Techno, a bit more of a perhaps uh, arty knife, who knows. And next to a Spyderco Police, a bit more of a big slicey knife. Next to everyone's favourite budget bushcraft knife, the Mora Companion. And next to my favourite small compact survival type knife, the Falkenhoven F1. And also against the Falkenhoven A1, much bigger. Let's go the thickness as well. Uh, I'll illustrate, this is kind of a mid thickness. So that's the Police on the left, the Crooked River, and then the F1. So it's definitely within the realms of being stout, but not too stout. So that blade there is made of S30V. It's got a saber grind. Saber grind means that it's flat to about, as you can see, a third of the way down, and then it has another flat area going off at a different angle, and then you've got the cutting bevel, which is like the bottom couple of millimeters. Uh, this blade is a really good performer for the intent behind it. Uh, it's a clip point, which means that it has that sudden drop off, and then it has a swedge too, which means that the steel is, if, if you look at where it drops off, you can see it's been sort of ground inwards as well. Uh, so that's all for making it more of a sort of pokey, slicey type knife, just for, um, I guess, well, hunting knives have quite often been clip points and general sort of spaying blades and that sort of thing. Um, you know, you uh, basic uh, case knives and that sort of thing, your barlow knives very often clip points. Uh, drop points are also quite synonymous with hunting, but you know, the Buck 110 folding hunter, folding hunter, and it's a clip point knife. So this one's kind of going for the same aesthetic, I guess. Uh, I use this knife against a whole bunch of wood. Uh, wood is a great test of a knife just to see how, because um, it's got a, offers a bit of resistance, because it's hard stuff. Um, it's a good test of how the ergonomics are, and this one is ergonomically very, very sound. And also the blade has decent enough angles to be able to do some, you know, basic woodworking tasks. It's the sort of thing you'd expect from time to time. You know, the ideal romantic fantasy, you know, for these types of knives is, you know, going out into the backcountry and making traps and all that sort of stuff, using using your, your folding knife, all that sort of stuff. And it'll do all that just fine. Uh, if you, Especially if you've got the skills to go with it, which I don't have. I'm just... I just test it against wood to, to see how it feels against wood. If you know how to make traps and that sort of business, uh, all I can assure you is this is well made, it's ground well, it cuts well, and it'll um, more than likely do whatever you're trained or whatever you're experienced in using a knife for doing. So there you go. But enough about making traps. This is me, so of course we're going to cut up some cheese with it because that is that is the people who watch this channel. That is what you expect from me. Uh, if you want to see traps being made, there are plenty of folks who can do that for you. Uh, this is a really a very common use of my EVC knives, um, is to cut up just bait, not always cheese, but you know, whatever I'm preparing for like a quick um, a quick sit down. So this is like our Walking Dead slash Star Trek Discovery Night stuff, so we're getting like a cheese platter going and some like berries and stuff like that, so use the Crooked River to prepare that. And you know what, it is... I, I'm not just saying that as a reviewer for like a fake use. This is actually a main thing I use my knives for because I know they're going to be sharp. I can do it so much easier than getting our crappy sort of kitchen knives out of the out of the block. Our kitchen knives get abused. I think everyone's kitchen knives get abused 
you know, pretty badly by sort of everyone who's not me sort of thing. You know, most people use their kitchen knives as utility knives and everything. And, you know, my wife does the same. She doesn't carry a pocket knife. So I much prefer just to do, you know, if I'm doing a, a five or ten minute job like this, I much prefer to just use my EDC knife for doing it. It works well. So anyway, um, you can see it's uh, skinned and field dressed that Yalsberg wedge pretty well. And um, yeah, no problems at all. I find saber grinds are pretty decent for cutting cheese up because the uh, top sort of flat part pushes this stuff apart. Flat grinds can often have a bit of stick going. And you'll see uh, momentarily when I use it against some real sort of um, crumbly, softer vintage cheese, uh, exactly what I mean. It's, um, you wouldn't want a full flat grind knife sometimes. It's often why full flat ground cheese knives have those gaps in them because it, it's, a, it's enough, less of a sticking point for the said cheese. But, technical cheese cutting aside, uh, I'll just show you what I was talking about uh, right now. So that's uh, Mercy Valley Vintage Cheese. Um, if this was a different grind of knife, it would be sticking way more to the blade. So, And this was done on a pretty warm night, so um, yeah, pretty happy with the performance of this as a cheese knife. And there we go. I'm in tonight. That is impressive. And just again, for like, camp purposes, here's me cutting up a tomato, in case you're interested. Uh, does pretty well on that. And then here is me cutting up an orange, so um, really good edge. Nice, the blade is thin enough to be able to do this stuff pretty well, and uh, I was just really generally happy with its performance against food and against wood, so really, really cool. Um, another great thing um, about this knife is that it is a bit more stout and a bit more robust. The uh, edge is a little bit sort of thicker and stronger, so you can use it against harder tasks. So, I mean, wood isn't super easy on a knife. You want a bit of thickness behind the edge for wood, but then you can push it into things like, um, well, here's some nasty sort of reinforced garden hose, and it goes through it, no worries at all. So, really, really well done, uh, blade. And just, you know, it's not the sliciest blade in the world, but it's good for this being a you know, four inch, effectively, uh, multi purpose outdoor utility blade. So, no problems with that whatsoever. Them dogs love their oranges. Uh, ergonomically, it's completely sound. It's not amazing, it's uh, a little bit square. Um, it's not super rounded or contoured, but it's very basic, so it's going to fit everyone's hands. Uh, I've got a larger hand, I've got plenty of space hanging off the back. It is a larger knife, and larger knives, especially with not larger knives with simple handles, are going to be pretty well uh, navigated by pretty much anyone, so no worries at all with that. It's um, definitely got um, enough to purchase and all that business, and no problems at all. Uh, In-pocket retention is done via the split arrow clip. Yeah, sure. We all know it's the penis clip. Everyone calls it the penis clip. Sorry, Benchmade. It is true. It's not a bad clip, frankly. It's got the you know got the gap between the knife and your pocket just fine. It's got enough ramp. It's just a bit funny looking, and it's not deep carry. So I think everyone would prefer the Benchmade deep carry clip. But you know this is what you get. Look, overall, uh, it's a large knife. So as I said, back to the buck ten, uh, buck one ten. It's um, yeah, for people that size. If it didn't have a clip on it, it'd be a great sheath knife. It's just that sort of feeling. The axis long is strong and robust way of locking it. Um, and it's fun to flip with and play around with as well. So it does have that little bit of extra sort of modernity going towards it. Um, there's a couple of little imperfections on it that I noticed. So say on the titanium bolster, it's got um, like a little bit of a dinting there. And I noticed the tip of the knife just isn't quite perfectly done like it's they've sort of taken it a bit far up the belt I think and given it a bit of a, a rounding over so there's that as well but overall it's pretty much centered uh, there isn't really anything glaring about it that sometimes you get with benchmades I've had benchmades arrive where the screws didn't fit and all that sort of stuff so um, it's done pretty well in terms of fit and finish on this particular example but then of course keep in mind that benchmades can be a bit haphazard another thing to consider is it's a quite expensive knife yeah it's got some decent material so it's got like the the um, stabilized wood and the titanium bolster and the extra little um you know orange and it's got the stylized you know orange features which you love or hate i quite like them i think they look fine um s30v is a decent blade steel it's not super you know super high end anymore but um the whole knife package is going to be in australia about 325 bucks i reckon in america it's even in your low 250s or so uh, i'll flash up versions on the screen of how much they actually cost so there's a fair price here uh, it's a large knife though so i wouldn't say it's a rip-off particularly especially seeing as some smaller benchmades go for more or less the same price when they're made out of aluminium and s30v that's looking at the 940 there for example so there is that it's a steeply priced knife but i think it's about okay for value rather than being great value or being poor value i think it's just good it's ju just fine 
So overall. So yeah, I mean, if there's a couple of things that you may just make this knife not for you. So one is the size. One, it is a very big knife, and it's not particularly EDC friendly. It's a lot thicker than, say, my Spyderco Police, uh, which I don't mind EDCing for sure. Um, other thing is the orange features. Some they're quite polarizing. I've noticed some people think they're absolutely disgusting, and other people think they're quite cool. I think it's just kind of like a cute throwback to like you know hunting, hunting products. So you get your your fluoro vests for hunting, so your mates don't shoot you, and you have your knife that's orange, so you can find it when you drop it. It's practical, I guess, and you know I'm all for practicality, so no worries at all from me with that. I wouldn't mind seeing like a a version with blue or something like that, or you know, and you can get this in G10 if the wood doesn't do it for you as well. So there's a couple of varieties, and I wouldn't mind if they offered say like a a yellow or just a different color of G10. Orange isn't everyone's favorite color for sure. But anyway, um, really sort of minor nitpicks on this one. I do think it is a really, really good knife. Um, the only other thing that's just me, I'm always going to bring it up, I really don't like the exposed tang on it. So I, I'm just not a big fan of the... Um, just having that bit of extra steel sticking out there. I just find when it's in my pocket, it can sometimes catch on my keys or catch on something that might be at the bottom of my pocket. And um, it just is a bit of a lint trap as well. On an axis lock, it's not the end of the world, but on a lock back, you can definitely find it can disengage the lock or make it so the lock doesn't lock up if you get a reasonable bit of like pocket fluff or um, scrunched up receipt or something caught in there. So just another thing I'd mention. I'd love if they changed that, but it isn't the end of the world. I just just never like it, and it's always going to be on my on my little list of cons for a knife when that exists. But anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed seeing this knife. It is a good one, and I would recommend it if you're after something larger, something like you fancy the look of the Buck 110, but maybe you want those modern features. I think this one really does bring all those to play, and it's good. Well done, Benjamin. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye now.